He married my sister, now we're living together. Roommates in law. Bingo. Not Hello, roommates. Timothy, not even in laws. Good bean. Dude, I realized last week on our hundredth episode, we've done this a hundred times and we did the intro wrong, I think. <laughs> I, I think I said we're not even uh brothers, and you said we're not even in-laws. Incredible. <laughs> we missed the roommates. <laughs> I think we were so excited that we made it to a hunch. Yeah. That we just kind of fucked everything up when we got there. As I mean, how many times? We gotta get our ten thousand hours in. How many hours do you think we have working together? On the pod? Pod series S- you jokes know, I'm, road. I'm ca- yeah, jokes road. I'm counting I'm counting several hangs too. <laughs> hangs are in there. I mean, let's see. Where would we be? We're at a hundred, so so that's a hundred hours right there, Tom. Boom. That's good, man. I mean, let's see. And then we'll say hangs. I mean, we gotta I mean, we'll toss in how many hang, how many times have we hung out? Two fifty? You think we've hung out two hundred and fifty times? I mean, probably. No well, chance. I don't know. I've only known you for like three years. That's not true. Is that true? No, it's got to be four years. We haven't hung out for four years. Let's see. Four years. There's 365 days in a year, Tom. So now yeah. we're looking at 1460 days. Yeah, How 250 many... might be a lot. I think we've hung out 100 times. 100? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we've hung out once every six days. <laughs> no, during the the Demi. It was, Demi, we put up numbers for th- sure. Th- those were big numbers. I was coming over to your house because I was living in that in the in the ratchet comedian house. Oh, yeah. You had to get out of there. So I was just coming over every night <laughs> with a just bottle of vodka. And bottle, a bottle of vodka. Of orange juice. I was like, oh, a screwdrivers again, Tom? <laughs> Don't yeah, mind if I do. Yeah, you really put up a fight. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. You're like, I'm just standing there with an empty glass and ice. But at least it was under the. Yeah, you're like, I guess. At least it was under the guise of uh, writing. writing. We were writing. I was about to say, but we were. Uh-huh. Some would say it we was wrote just a little bad bit for a little while. It, boy, was it. Well, we know we did write that really cool DraftKings commercial. Oh, yeah, that was great. Also, again, we have to we can't apologize enough to Sabine Sadiq for <laughs> driving in to come do the sketch. And we shot it for four hours and then completely forgot that we didn't write uh, any jokes or it made it didn't make any sense at all. It didn't looking at the footage was like, no, ah, some of these shots are good. I don't know where to put what, because nothing of n- mm-hmm. none of it was funny. Damn, no, we, didn't we didn't make anything. We didn't make any sense. And no this jokes. One. It's incredible. Like, you know, she instantly like went into herself she's like wait did i suck like why didn't you guys put that out was i really bad and we're like funny story actually we didn't write anything <laughs> we forgot uh the writing part of this you know there are i think we are three roommates in law sketches that never saw the light of day which that ones were fully f- filmed what did they just suck we, well we had one somewhat recently remember i sent you an edit and you were like i, I don't really want to put this out and i was like yeah neither do i which one was that? It was it was the birthday one. A birthday argument. It was a, it was a it was a bathroom argument, and it was like. Uh, oh, I remember that. Is that one the one where we were kind of visibly hammered? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that one, and then we have one uh, where we did like a nine one one call, and there's just, there's one funny joke in the whole thing where I say I'm having an allergic reaction. Uh, you go. He had a P. He had a PB and J, and I was like, "I'm having an allergic reaction." And you're like, "To the PB or the J?" And I'm like, "Who's allergic to the J?" <laughs> that was a fun joke. Yeah, that's that's fun. But that that's was it. Fun. That was the whole. Yeah, you kind of, you you, you kind of need to have a little more PB in there, you know. <laughs> we need a little more juice. I mean, we, there's just not enough there, you know. But I'm happy that we saw it and we both said, "Hey, this what if sucks. we didn't?" Yeah, we don't, we don't even, even have to. Our, yeah, no, no one's. We're not on a deadline. No one's gonna be pissed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's just toss a bad sketch out there. You know, uh, some would say more people need to quality control their life, their behavior, their online presence. I think we've they- talked about this before. A, a great feature of a social media platform. Maybe this is a new platform that we start. Maybe we start an app. Or just a, called quality a, a control media. And every time you post, two friends have to approve it. First. Two, yeah, yeah. 
and you, but you get to pick the two. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess you could just put in a couple of yes uh, men. You know, it's like it's like there needs to be some way to prove that those are good friends who actually care about you. Yeah, who not yes give men. you the advice that you need? Exactly. Because some of these, I mean, there was a post today that got tossed out there. New tattoo. Ah. Uh, you know, well, someone needed to quality control the tattoo too. somebody. I mean, uh, that one went through several rounds. You know, they draw it out. He says, this is kind of what I'm thinking. Here's the quote. Hey, how did that get through <laughs> okay, multiple get, people? Call up the tattoo. When people not? know this guy. Well, the tattoo sucks. <laughs> it's the worst. I'm tattoo. editing out the tattoo. <laughs> You can't just, just pull, put him on blast. You're going to ruin this man's life. Well, I'm sorry. He needs friends or loved ones in his life to say, hey. Tattoos? No. Every once in a while, I, I got no problems with tattoos, but every once in a while, you see a tattoo bad enough that you sound like my grandpa all of a sudden, and it's like, yeah. you're going to yeah, you're gonna have that for the rest of your life? That's what you want for the rest of Tom, I think that all the fucking time. Walking around New York, I'm like, yeah, there's no way you're going to want SpongeBob on you. Forever? In 30 years? Yeah. Spongebob? Actually, no. I, don't, I don't hate that one. I kind of like that. But it's like, you know, you got to put SpongeBob head, on your calf. Like, I know it's quirky and weird right now, but, you know, we got a quality control here. You got a long life to live. You'd, everything in your life should require two friends to sign off. Two good friends that are kind of mean, kind of mean. But the the problem with the quality control thing is what we do. You could just stack the board. I know. How do you prove that they're good? You have to like kind of like roast them first to like prove that you're good enough friends. Yeah, like if you're too like if you're not a big enough dick, they're like, <laughs> yeah. sorry, you can't be on the board of this one. No chance. Or maybe it's like you they kind of like evaluate your life decisions up until this point to to decide how dickish these people need to be. Yeah, that's you know oh, what yeah. I mean? you need you need a full board of directors. Like yeah. you need like like <laughs> we need a you team need around you. Corporate governance. <laughs> <laughs> everyone gets assigned a different like structure like some people get like the three branches of government and some people get a full <laughs> corporate board it's like you're it's, a non-profit you're doing fine you're doing fine you do you do. you over here we're gonna need to we're gonna need a lot of checks and balances with this one well because you can also evaluate people based on their potential you know like if someone does have like a high potential to be successful or something but they're just a loser on the internet yeah, like, you gotta you gotta where, curate that thing. Yeah, we need you in the pocket. That's when you just like some people just need a PR team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great guy, good person, got a lot of potential. Absolute moron though. Keeps fake crying on his Instagram story. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of real crying, dude, I got a uh -oh. haircut on Monday that's making me want to not go outside for three months nah the cut looks good no look at this when i take my headphones off look at uh -oh. this and i'm sorry to our youtube viewers <laughs> oh boy it you know it <laughs> <laughs> it does uh it kind of well, i don't know what's happening it kind of poofs there well it's it's in, it's in a bad place right now because i haven't brushed it today but it but, is kind of poof city on the side there. It's just it doesn't know what length it is. And she she just I said I showed her a picture of myself like three months ago. Oh, I deleted those pictures. Oh no, here we go. This is what I showed her. Does that look like the same length? <laughs> uh no. Not I mean, even kind of it's you know what it's you know four what inches happened. shorter. Maybe she didn't really take a look at it because if you just look at it real close, you're going, oh, the sides do look a little, a little shorter. Yeah, you know what? I think you got to do some real research to be like, oh, it's now that the hair's over there, it's just dark. You know what sucks? I think I kind of, I think it was my fault a little bit. So here's what happened: I go in for, for and, first cue. Can I toss a quick cue at you? Yeah. Uh, was there a language barrier? A uh, huge language barrier. See, this why are you doing that? So oh. th th that was a huge. She was a sweet old Korean woman. Love Koreans. Some of my favorite people on the planet. Sure. And uh, and I so I go in empty salon. Uh oh, Not middle good. of middle of Los Angeles <laughs> empty salon. <laughs> my roommate went there, 
And he uh, also got his hair cut too short. So, <laughs> so there's no reason. He also got a shitty haircut. Why did I go there? <laughs> I don't know why I went, but I go and and <laughs> checked she all asked the reviews. Front, they were horrible. Well, so she asked me up front. She was like, do you want this like the uh, haircut or like the full style or something? There was another name, but the full style was just like also shampoo and oh. Uh, like neck massage, and it was like five extra bucks. So I'm like, yeah, I'll do the full thing. Oh, and then we sit down, and she starts putting the thing on, and I go, oh wait, are we doing the shampoo? And she was like, do you want a shampoo now? And then that's where I was like, oh, whenever you usually do it, but the language barrier, I don't think she usually shampoos first. Because then we go to the shampoo, and my hair was long enough where when that's wet, I mean, it looks, it's like down to my shoulders. Oh, uh, okay. So now I think it just looked too long, and she couldn't tell how short she was going, and she went too short in the back because the sides started drying up, and I could tell she needed to even it out. Because I told her, I go, I think that's short enough. And she was like, it's not even in the back. She's like, no, no, I fucked all this up yeah, at the back. Dude. I, I kind of got my work cut out for me back here, Tom. I started getting a sinking feeling about halfway through it, and I was like, oh, no. She, she all of a sudden starts speaking perfect English. She, she's like, no, that's a disaster back <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. No, I Honestly. really, I, I, I kind of I got out of the pocket here. She knows everything about you all of a sudden. She's like, ah, God, and you're going to Cleveland this weekend? Shit. Oh, no. Man, hilarities. Tell Sam I say hi, though. It's a good room. <laughs> um, she She did keep just saying shorter is better. And I was well, like, yeah, I mean, she's got to. <laughs> She's got to defend her work. You know, she's trying to defend her thesis back there, Tom. She's going, oh, no, this I made all the right moves here. This looks really good, except for the sides and most of the back. And I don't know, top's a little goofy, but that'll be 38 <laughs> 50. And then, which it was. That is about what it cost. It was 35 bucks, which is too cheap for That's LA. That's too cheap for LA, and, for and sure. Another red flag. But. She, she goes about halfway through. This is kind of fun. She's like, are you single? I'm like, yeah, I am. And she just goes, do you like Asian girls? And it's like, it's so funny because you, you I'm like, yeah. But also then you don't want to like over. You don't yeah, want to be like, like oh, yeah. fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, I fucking love Asian chicks. She's like, all right, never mind. Jesus it Christ. It was so fun. It just kind of made me start laughing. And then she was like, can I set you up? And I was like, sure. I mean, you got my life in your hands right now. And this is such a crazy loaded question, like how you answer that. Because yeah. you can't go, oh, yeah. You also can't go, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can't be like, no, not really. Uh, I don't know. They're all <laughs> and the right. truth is, like, yeah, love Asian sure. girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, but you have to answer correctly. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. she's like, uh, so and then as after the haircut whatever she blow dries it it gets really short looking i'm kind of depressed i'm trying to get out of there i put my sunglasses on and i'm like walking out the door and she was like wait wait tom tom she kept calling me tom which she maybe she does listen to the pod honestly. i was about to say she listens to the pod for sure <laughs> what's She's up, like Grace? tomas <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> young man come back yeah young man tom schnee <laughs> um she's like tom tom and i turn around she's like with the sunglasses, you look like a movie star. There we go. <laughs> and then she yes. goes, can I take a picture to show the girls? And I was like, sure. And I'm like so mad about the haircut. Like I, I was so angry. And then I had to stand there and I would love to get my hands on that photo because I could just feel the smile was like. Really forced. <laughs> that angry. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> clenched teeth. You're like, hold on, let me go. Actually, go. That's a pretty nice car. Let me go lean on this car real quick. <laughs> you don't have a cigarette, do you? <laughs> hold on. Actually, I'll come back at six. That's kind of when the lighting is the best. <laughs> and uh, we can do a whole shoot. I'll bring some of my stuff. I got some good equipment. <laughs> and then I get a text about three hours later. It says, hi, Tom. This is Smile Hair Salon Grace. Can you really introduce a Korean girl? I think you have good personality. It's confirmation. I don't really wait. Know. So is she, I think she's trying to. It sounds like she's looking to get hooked up with a Korean girl. <laughs> it's the, that's the language barrier. It's like the possessive term is different in Korean. Right, right, right. So it's, she's like, wait, do I like Korean? chicks?" <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like she's asking me. I'm like, no, I don't know a ton of Korean girls out here. 
Yeah, that would be a t- if like you got brought to court for some reason and like on like some sort of like <laughs> sex slavery charges. That'd be a Which, tough. Yeah, that's always kind of on the plate for me. You never really know. <laughs> These people in L.A., Tom, I don't know what you're up to. No, we 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 ended at drinking baby blood. <laughs> that's what you you bathe yourself in that and then you're in right that's a, yeah that's the craziest shit we do out here and it's honestly really good for your skin it's it i have nice. heard it also it's like a um uh, people use it as like a kind of a natural like energy booster like as some people use like uh probiotics and stuff like that yeah but you don't need if to you just it's like two or three shots of uh, baby blood baby blood of like b- nine months and below i heard yeah. it's like kind of a natural well, because their uh, plasma boost. is still like really high, you know, yeah. so it's like it's you kind of get some of that. It's like being back in the womb, you know, it's, yeah. it's life giving. It's rejuvenating. You feel young. It's yeah, it's it's honestly it's really cool. And, you know, everyone lives different lives. I can't really, you know, tell people how to live, but I would it is a weird that. L.A. Th- just like the differences in like L.A. and New York, because like in New York, a lot of like we do like stem cell smoothies and that's mm-hmm. like kind of the way to keep the skin looking fresh and just to keep you, you know, it helps with like creativity and that yeah. kind of stuff. You've been doing that? Uh, well, it, it we have like we do one of those delivery things where they like drop off the smoothies to oh, your door every few yeah, weeks. Yeah. But it is just kind of expensive. Like it works, but it's like, I don't know, you know, it's like yeah. 400 bucks a month. It's also like you've kind of already decided you don't want kids. It kind of feels like disingenuous to Wait, actually, I don't even know if you have decided that, but it feels disingenuous to, to uh to be to be drinking the stem cells too. You know, it's kind of like talk the talk, walk the walk situation. Yeah, it's like if I'm gonna, if I would recreate, then I could take some stem cells. You deserve it, then, yeah, because you're bringing more of them. It kind of kind of evens itself out. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I guess if I'm not gonna have kids, it is. It feels like I'm just taking a lot. You're just taking, and see, we don't even kill the babies out here; they live. We just drink the blood. Yeah, that's 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 because people get upset. But it, like the argument is, it's just we're just taking it just goes into a little bag and then you chug it. You're telling me if I grew up knowing that Will Arnett drank all of my blood, I wouldn't be pumped about it. That's kind of a, like a, a natural icebreaker. It's a credit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's next guy. <laughs> I don't know why I went Will Arnett. I went like mid tier celebrity. Well, no, he's he's got to be up there, right? I love Will Arnett. I think he's up there. You know, you know, it's so funny and why I thought of him. My sister told me yesterday, this is a high compliment from sister number four. four. Wow, nice. Not a bad guess, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I've been drinking the stem cells, Tom. Yeah, sharp. God, your brain is fucking <laughs> on fire. It just feels young, you know? Uh, she goes, I was listening to, she was listening to Smartless with Conan. And she's like, the way Conan and Will Arnett would just go on huge, long tangents reminded me of you and Tim. And I was like, you don't understand that that is a wild compliment. Uh, I mean, go ahead and type that into the YouTube comments. And yes, have somebody please, call you up, Call you a dumb bitch for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> just instantly oh, man. get attacked. Dude, we got one the other day just on our YouTube channel. Fuck faces. It was just... Man, that intro is terrible. <laughs> like, give us a chance. Listen to part of the pod. I don't understand. I've never understood the urge <laughs> to just spread bile on the internet. I've never seen a thing and been like, I gotta, I gotta make sure this guy knows how much I hate this. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm angry on this. Tuesday I'm angry. Morning. And I got to let something out. Life's beating the shit out of me. <laughs> and I got to hurt somebody. <laughs> and to those people, I say, try getting a little booster shot of baby's blood. It will or, change your entire mindset. Or a stem cell or smoothie. If you're on the stem East Coast. Smoothie. If you're on the East Coast, it's the East Coast, West Coast thing. It's kind of like Tupac Biggie. And if you're in uh, the Midwest, just get some cheese curds. Just cheese curds not? do the exact same thing. <laughs> I love it. Gotta kill for it fucking cheese curd man right i would i would go nuts for a cheese curd actually you know what i got a cheese has been kind of you know it's beating the shit it's like it's almost like cliche like as you get older things just cheese is a dairy is out of my life dude pizza's really been betraying me lately and it's right? like it's it's really feels unfair because i kind of thought i was immune to that i was like no minnesota i grew up in the midwest we're not 
lactose intolerant shit doesn't work. And I don't know if I'm lactose intolerant, but something isn't good. Something happening. is changing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your body's like, what happens? We gave you. We gave you. Do you shit or not shit? Uh, it depends on how much cheese. And you know, with pizza, it depends a lot on like the grease levels. You know, if it's Grease Town, USA, I'm going into the bathroom and I'm causing a little trouble. (laughs) Dude, I'm straight up explosive diarrhea. (laughs) Explosive. Now, if I eat a bunch of pizza, then it's the old fashioned boy. I gotta take a shit, and you go in there, and your body's like, "Think again, buddy." Boy. Guess, guess what? We got a baseball clogging up the the exit. <laughs> and I just hear Lizzie in the other room, like, "Are you good in there?" Because she just hears me screaming, "Fuck!" <laughs> oh God. So yeah, it's just out of my life. And then you know, you start in you know, a milk and everything. You start hitting the milk button. It's just I'm just yeah, a farty dirt. How button. often are you drinking milk? Well, you know, it's in a latte. Yeah, you. But we're we're done with the glasses of milk for coffee for morning coffee. You can't be doing oh, lattes anymore. I accidentally had a nice, tall, warm glass of milk this morning. Tom. God, you just can't. Here's the only latte I'll still do because I. This is it. This is a. This is my recommendation for the week. I was in Cleveland a couple weeks ago. It was cold. It got down to like fifty, and mm. I don't enjoy many things more than a sweatshirt. About 55 degrees morning coffee walk. Brother, you are speaking my fat little mean, language. Oh, Love just a it. cozy sweatshirt. I'm walking around Cleveland. It's like not, it's not dreary, but it's full fall. Like sure. it's, it's, you know, it's getting, I mean, chilled. not, not even Cleveland can ruin that. And no, and it tried. <laughs> it smelled about as bad as Times Square. You're like, oh, another abandoned building. Great. <laughs> it's straight, uh, it was it was bleak. It was like, and they, they got like, they're stepping up. They're not in the minors anymore. They have major league homeless people in Cleveland. Oh, they're really doing it out there. They've picked up their game. Well, they, I mean, they, that's got, what it, you... I, they got needles. They got, oh, wow. they got, they got building shouters, you know, just straight into a brick wall. You rarely see that outside of a major market. New York is really the only place you see that consistency. <laughs> consistency. You don't see that much in the tertiary markets, Tom. That's more <laughs> no, of that's, that's, that's big market. budget. That's, that's big budget ball right there. <laughs> yeah, when you start so, to see some of those people, you're like, "Damn, you're really in it." Yeah, I so saw Cleveland. I, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, so, anyways, yeah, we just go down a really bleak uh, road. No, so I I get out of kind of that area and I go for a walk and I got a ch- I got a dirty chai tea latte. Now uh, you're gonna have to educate me. I, I think I have a, a an undereducated palate sometimes when it comes to the coffee set. Well, here's the thing. So do I, because I'm not fully. I don't fully know what it is, but chai tea is a kind of tea. If you'd be, if if uh, if that, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Chai I'm tea say is you're- tea. <laughs> Sure. Okay. And then, but, and so a normal chai tea latte is just like tea and like foamed milk. Okay. A dirty chai tea latte, they toss some espressi in there. Lo- I mean, I'm loving that. And it's just, it's like this kind of cinnamony type taste. But Not overpowering. In the cold weather, no, it's like a treat. It's mm, like, damn it. It's amazing. I just wish I didn't have to say. Dirty chai tea, chai tea latte. Yeah, I mean that's you, you can know, even say you can say filthy and it's double espresso. I mean you're kind of filthy. That's way where you kind of. It's almost <laughs> like I want to like or, order it like I'm robbing a bank. Like I just want to <laughs> yeah. slide, slide over a, a note. note. <laughs> I want to. I'm gonna go in there and be like, hey, can I have a dirty little slutty little filthy <laughs> chai tea latte? <laughs> can I have the sluttiest little chai tea latte you can imagine? <laughs> Yeah, hey, can I get a taking it from the back uh, chai tea latte? Uh, raw doggy, yeah. Absolutely no protection on that thing. Yeah, no rush. Whenever you're ready, I'd like a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like a cum drizzling down my face and throat latte. <laughs> That's just three shots of espresso. <laughs> Uh, and then they take the foamed milk and just throw it on your face. It's got to drizzle it on your lips a little bit. <laughs> mm, thank you. I'm like, New York has gotten weird. Since oh, I've it's gotten there. weird out here. Trendy. It would be, pretty trendy, it would be amazing to have that happen to you. I mean, that's a fun sketch. It's just happening to you conversationally. As like me and you are talking about like business. 
you know, like we're waiting and you're like, yeah, you know, ticket sales are like, yeah, it's up and down, but oh yeah. And they just drizzle the milk on your face. And the whole and time going, yeah, you, you like that shit? You like that? <laughs> going, yeah. Thank put you. It all over, put it all over my face. Yeah. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, so I got a meeting with them next Monday. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I sell pretty well in Boston. I don't know. <laughs> Just covered in foam. <laughs> God. That is like, you know, we got to tone it down. It's like where, you know, you go to IHOP and they have a really good looking this thing, but it's like called like the Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity. I remember I was on a road trip one time and we stopped in a little IHOOP. And I'm looking, I'm like, this looks, but I'm like, I can't say Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity. I won't do it. That's a point to the menu. I'll have, can I have this? Yeah, yeah you can to, just point to the menu. Can I get that right there? And she was looking at She's like, nah. I, it, I just bitch. love how conversationally and confidently you said, you know, you go to an IHOP these days. <laughs> like, well, I was thinking about the last time I went to an IHOP, and it was, <laughs> to be fair, it was like five years ago. Yeah, at three I haven't in the morning, been to an IHOP since I was like 12. IHOP is good. It doesn't have it shit on good. Waffle House, though. No, Waffle House, because it's like, if you're going to go to a place that's that cool, like level of quality, like pretty mid to low. You just want to go full Waffle House, right? But I, I, um, I'm gonna take exception to you saying Waffle House is <laughs> mid to low level food. It's Tom, that's top tier stuff. It tastes amazing. Sure, I mean it's gonna you're gonna pay dearly, but <laughs> yeah, it, it's that's top what tier. I, that's what I said. Quality, like. Nah. Yeah, like the ingredients. It's not. Uh, we're, we're not. What, what is it called? It's not like grade A top choice. It's certainly not farm to USDA. Table. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. It's powder to water. <laughs> it's yeah. It's powder to water. It's farm to like some weird factory in Cleveland that's like kind of shut down. Yeah. And then it goes. I don't know. To some guy like, broker's house. And then it's. I don't know. Gets stale for ten years. And then boom. two people have to. In order for it to get served at Waffle House, two people do need to fist fight over the box that it came in. <laughs> and then it can go to a. It's like that's how they distribute their food. Is all the store managers have to fist fight each other to get ingredients. That's like how they grade the meat. They're like, oh yeah, then no, this box was fought over like ten to twelve <laughs> times. That's good shit. <laughs> that's really good. Man, Zach Pugue has uh, has two of my favorite Taco Bell related jokes. But one that he was, I just saw the other day is like, uh, it's like uh, somebody was telling me like, you can't eat Taco Bell. You know that meat comes in a powder form. It shows up as powder, and then they turn it into meat. And he's like, Did you hear what you just said? We're living in the future. That's amazing. It's just future meat. <laughs> yeah. I love uh... the argument of like. That's disgusting. But like when you're growing up, like that's like smart house, like uh, any futuristic thing. That's what food was, was like in a tube and then it turns into something else. Yeah, they dump it into like this weird thing and it goes through a conveyor belt and then it comes out <laughs> as like this like giant turkey with like the little stems <laughs> on the legs. Yeah, and it's like steaming and it's got like it's like got yeah. garnishes on it. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, wait, wait, no, this is amazing. This is progress. But if we did that. No one would no one would get on board with that. No, everybody would be I mad. Eat this easy bake oven shit. I mean, I don't know. I mean, but the thing you know, even arguing about the quality of food at Taco Bell is a fool's <laughs> errand. I mean, it's Taco Bell, idiot. Yeah. What are we doing here? I don't know. I you like it. Save up a little money. Go to, go treat yourself to some Waffle House. Uh yeah, you got to go quality, you know, when you get the chance. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to a Waffle House I don't know. In a long time, I gotta get back. I gotta get it back to to my roots. I've been drinking too much baby blood. Feeling good. Feeling healthy. Last time I was at a Waffle House, it was me and Maddie Weiner coming back from the Comedy Attic in Bloomington. Um, we stopped at a goofy ass part of uh, Indiana, and everyone in there had a gun on their hip. Um, <laughs> like high schoolers were visibly hammered. Cops oh, yeah. were in there talking to the high schoolers but they like all knew each other yeah i think we've talked i think maybe we talked about this uh, i think we did talk about this on the years pod. and years ago but it was the craziest thing i've ever seen in my fucking life dude i know that the right to carry open carry states exist but anytime i see a civilian with a gun on their hip i'm like god Jesus it's jarring Christ. it's and like i'm not even a guy that's like guns have to be melted down and you know made into figurines or whatever but all like, right you fucking alt-right piece of shit <laughs> but it's like oh i don't know if 
I don't know if I trust you with one, though. Well, I just we don't need one at 2A in Waffle House. Yeah, I'm like, because, I mean, you're uh, pretty visibly drunk at 3 mm-hmm. in the morning at a Waffle House. I don't know. I don't if know a if Glock is... nine milli is what we need on you. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's crazy because they're not like cute revolvers either. No, it's like this is a this is a semi-automatic handgun with like eighteen rounds in the in the clip. I mean, this could really cause some damage. But hey, no worries. the The dumbest human being in Indiana <laughs> owns it. <laughs> don't worry about it. They don't call the cops. That's like one yeah. of those signs, you know? Don't worry. Hey, this guy that barely got out of high school, it's him carrying it around. And he's drunk and mad. <laughs> God. Have you ever seen those? Uh, did, did you have a lot of those in Louisiana? The signs on shops that are like, we don't call 911. And there's sure. like a picture of the gun. Seen a few of those. I, yeah. I saw one of those in Cleveland. And the guy was just, the shop owner was an absolute nutcase. I'm like, you don't call them. I'm not sure you have a, a phone. <laughs> and here's the truth. They love calling 911. What are yeah, you, you talking love about? Cops. I mean, the Venn diagram of the people that have that and call the cops all the time is just a circle. But they the love same. the cops. Yeah. Yeah. They call it's, them just to come hang. <laughs> it's your pals. Yeah. They're like, hey, I don't know. There's like a black guy within 200 yards of my shop. You want to come over and like you want to come harass head? him a little bit? <laughs> I don't know. It looks yeah. like he hadn't been punched in the face in a while if you don't have anything to do. <laughs> Cleve Town. So tell me about Cleveland. How was I it? think I, I think I'm done with I, I think I'm done with Cleveland. I got a uh-huh. uh, I got one. I mean, not in a bad way. Cleveland's the best. That 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 comedy club rules. They there's very really few clubs that uh oh yeah. I mean, it's a it's a beautiful hotel. It's across the street from the club and they have uh the owner of this club in Cleveland is Greek. What do you know about the Greeks? Um, good food. That's yeah, that's funny. That's what I was gonna bring up. Well, like the my the driver who like works for the club who like picked us up from the airport, she's like, he's full Greek, like he's gonna make sure you're eating the whole time. He's like an amazing dude. And she wasn't wrong, like at a, at most comedy clubs, I don't know. I've heard rumors of like people gossiping about comics ordering too much food or ordering the expensive shit right 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 you know and I, that's like my worst nightmare is to have that be a rep at a club yes like there was one club who was like they were like yeah craig robinson ordered the seafood every night and and they were pissed about it and i'm like if he can't do it yeah you're like but- I, i'm not even allowed to order ketchup i can't do anything <laughs> yeah, yeah what i guess i'll just have like the runoff of the grease pan they're like, oh, here comes Tommy Steaks. Oh, here he fucking comes. <laughs> Tommy Cheeseburgers over here. Here we go. You want another filet, Tom? <laughs> so I have this Wait. thing in my head where I'm really nervous about it. And this uh, club, Cleveland Hilarities, they have a full-scale nice restaurant on top. Yeah. And they encourage you to order the food. I mean, the guy, the owner is like, order the, you have to order the steak. It's unbelievable. And I'm looking at it. The steak is $52. Can't do that. And I'm like, I can't. I mean, the owner literally sat down next to me and made me order it because I was like, I can't. I can't do that. I'll, I'll get the. And then the first night I'm, I'm like, I was ordering like uh, the hummus platter or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'll just have and a he, sugar packet or two. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> you like crab cakes? And I'm like, yeah, of course. But like and he's like, we're doing crap. You're doing crab cakes. Gives me like a double order of crab cakes. It's just like it's cool to be in a club where they like it is genuinely. They take care of you. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. they have to be losing money on, on us, but they do take care he's like, of you. You like crab cakes? You like Asian girls? What are you at on Asians? <laughs> I got a couple of those teed up for you. So Cleveland ripped. I got a I had a little maybe this is like a curb your enthusiasm moment when I got back. I went to my favorite taco stand right by my house. They a burrito there is ten bucks, ten bones. That's right, right in the pocket for a burrito. I, I, I usually go a ten and then a one in the tip jar. Sure, is that is that fair? Ten and one, yeah. I mean, a ten percent tip, you're not doing great there, but sure, yeah, that's not great. But do you usually tip at a at like a taco truck? Taco truck, I think, is different. I think the one in there is is fine. Okay, because that's basically what this, I mean. It's a stand set up on the side of the road. Okay. Yeah. Um, God, I look like Doc Brown. <laughs> What's going on with my hair? <laughs> um, uh, you just got to hibernate for two or three months. You'll yeah. Be fine. Uh, so I, so I've got a ten and a five, 
And so she goes, it's 10 bucks. I give her the 10. Mm. And then I go, and this is a, we're, we're in, we're in Spanish right now. So it's like not going great. Like I'm, I'm I don't speak awesome Spanish, but she doesn't speak a word of English. So right. I hand her the five and I go, I'm like, can I get, could you break this for me? Say and that. say it in Spanish. Say I said, said, puedo tener cambia. Like, can I have change? Then, right. Okay. And, uh, and she was like, yes. And then she reached into the tip. She, she put the five in the tip jar and reached into the tip jar and said, how much do you want? But taking it from the tip jar just felt so. Oh, because she goes first. No, she the goes, five went in. She goes, is it for the, is it for a tip? And I oh, was okay. like, uh, yes. And then she, then she was like, so how much do you want back? Like, it was kind of like, how much are you taking? from me mm, okay how and cheap it, are you gonna be right now because your, your burrito hasn't been made yet so this is kind of yeah, dude exactly it was like kind of has you by the, the short handcuffs. and curlies there tom yeah dude i don't know why i got such a kick out of it but i was like this is an expert move right yeah, here. you're like i just i'm getting absolutely body bagged by the <laughs> burrito truck lady right now holy yeah, shit dude. okay she's I didn't a know pro I, I mean she she's drank like a, a stem cell smoothie that morning and she came in to play oh she's dialed in some of that baby blood was in the carnitas she saw you and she's like well here's an easy mark and guess what it worked i said i'll have three back Instead of two sure. back, yeah. I heard instead of four back. <laughs> that hurts. Yeah, because I mean, for some reason, you feel insanely cheap, only yeah. giving them one. But two, you're like, I'm a bit of an aristocrat if I toss two at them. Yeah. But one, what am I? I'm a pig. I, I guess. And just there was something about her physically taking it out of the tip jar in front of me that was such a checkmate move. It was incredible. Like, she's like, oh, you need change. Is this for the tip? You're like, oh, no, no, no. I'm going to a strip club after this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's like, oh, OK. I just wanted to know if you wanted to help support my children that are You're playing behind this truck right now at 10 p.m. Right. on a Sunday. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to support someone else's children because they didn't when they were young. So I got to go <laughs> pay this lady's rent. <laughs> You know me, big strip club guy. Big strip club guy, Tom. That would be so funny if that was like one of your. That was just kind of my secret thing. One of your little things, like that people kind of like. Do you know Tom? I'm like, yeah, Tom's a great guy. Like, loves a strip club. Though. You know, he's kind of a strip club fiend. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes when I get off the road and I come back on a Sunday night and I just want to get cozy, I just get comfy and then I head out to the strip club by myself mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. eat a chicken wing platter. And I just watch my girls dance and just we have a nice conversation. They're like my friends, though. It's not like a strip club, strip guy relationship. We're like actually close. Well, it's because actually a lot of them. I hate to say this, but a lot of them do like kind of have a crush on me. Like a lot they of kind of like, like you. Me. Yeah. 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 They never hung out uh, outside of the strip club, nor would they return your text. But they do like you. a lot. Well, I just don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. You know, it's a professional relationship, but they do. Yeah. They don't want to take work home with them. Leave work at work. You yeah, know? that's my happy place. That's where that's I go where... to just reset. I kind of go there and write a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Writing at a strip club would be amazing. A lot of people go to a coffee shop to work on their screenplay. I just head on over to uh, Goldie's Sassy yeah. Ladies Club. But where are you drawing inspiration from in a coffee shop? Yeah. At a strip nothing. club, there's art all around you. Yeah, I'm like, oh, damn, there's someone's butthole. That's a, <laughs> that gives me a great idea. Holy that's the epiphany shit. moment in every movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the music swells and you start writing ferociously on a napkin. No, or no, you go over to the window and you start putting your algorithm <laughs> equation on the window, beautiful mind style. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boy, Air Marshall just blows your head off. <laughs> Did we talk about the 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 what you, the the goddamn a beautiful mind. Did we talk about the the run that Russell Crowe went on in the nineties or the <laughs> early two thousands, Tom? I Did mean, we talk about this? This guy really turned in some heat. Just some ten out of ten stuff. I mean, I bet Gladiator, I haven't seen one of those movies. You've seen Gladiator. I have seen Gladiator. A uh, Beautiful Mind. No. Cinderella Man. Mm, I want to say yes, but I'm feeling no. I mean, these are not. Well, you can watch Glad. Uh, no, still can't watch. These are not movies to watch on an air. Air. Um, Jesus, plane. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna let him finish this. I want to see where he goes with this one. On an air flight. On an air flight. 
I knew that's where you were going. Your mouth went back to F three times before you got out of there. You go, I, air f- f- well, I was going to say a flight, and then I was like, air, f- you know, when you're, I, was, I think I was going airplane, air flight, flight. It just, uh, none of it felt air correct. trip, air travel. This is, but you're going to boohoo. You're, I mean, you're a movie crier. Oh, I thought cry. you were saying because of, uh, yeah, I think I've seen Cinderella Man. What's the premise? Uh, well, it's true story alert. Love a true story. He's a Man, boxer. That me, like that makes me cry instantly when it says inspired right? by a true story. When it's a true story, a true story, I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm gonna ball my eyes out. Oh, That's... bad things actually happen to someone in the world. <laughs> Certainly not me. I've only lived a very comfy, <laughs> beautiful life. Um, what's that, Aaron Brockovich? Sure, I'll cry a lot. Um, but he's a boxer, and like the you know during the, yes. like the Great Depression. And he's like kind of down and out and he's getting older and he like gets a fight as, um, you know, like a favor done to him. And he like beats this big guy and then he goes on this run. Oh, this is the one. And, and then at the end, he's like, Adrian. No, oh, no, that's that's a different <laughs> one. Uh, that's Rudy. <laughs> no, that's when they pick him up off the field and they uh, bring him oh, off. The yes, state yes, yes. Bring- Rocky four. Rocky four is when they yeah. carry him off the field at Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah. Um. A uh, wildly inaccurate movie, uh, from what I've heard. Yeah, but how's that in the Notre Dame it lore? Movie? Oh, everyone knows it's entirely fake. Rudy oh, okay. is kind of the, the actual guy is kind of a joke because he's like an mean? inspirational speaker, but like or a motivational speaker, but like everyone like in the Notre Dame community kind of knows that he's like full of shit. Well, well it's also Joe like, Montana, why? Joe Montana, kind of embarrassed him, kind of exposed him. Oh, tell me more about this. I did not know this. Oh, he was like, yeah, he did get carried off the field. That is true. It was like a full on joke. Oh, no. And they didn't chant his name. No one was chanting his name. They, they didn't turn in their jerseys for him. Oh, I didn't know it was this big of a sham. I knew it was Sham Town USA. I didn't well, know the, it was the like... problem is there's like parts of it that you'd be like, that's <laughs> fake. But he did get in and he did get a sack. OK, well, but, that rules. So, so like that part's real because that's like in the stat book. But Man, then, who were like, they playing where he got a fucking sack. I don't know. I mean, it was like they were. They, it was a blowout. It was the end of the game. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. I can't imagine buying a ticket to to a motivational speaker of like you're like, oh, you, <laughs> you were a walk play? on. You, you were the worst <laughs> player on the team. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't really get it, uh, but. Yeah, the, so no one within the note. I mean, we all love the movie. I mean, the movie makes me cry every time. It's a crier. And, well, because the other true part is Vince Vaughn was on the team too. Vince, that's where he was first discovered. Fun fact. Well, yeah, because that's where him and John Favreau met was when they were both students at Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. John Favreau was like a nerd. He was actually at Holy Cross, but then Vince Vaughn was a he was the third. There's a lot quarterback. of quarterback overlap, though. Yeah. A lot of hang, um, a lot of, uh, lot of hangs happening between the two. Sneaky. It's like how Pamela Anderson got discovered at a football game. Vince Vaughn got discovered playing football. Uh, yes, Yo Yo Ma's cousin, Lil Nepotiz. That's what, that was the delivery that you had on that. Sorry, that's just a little School of Rock reference. Hey, you know who? Um, oh, Turkey Sub. That's still my favorite line from <laughs> School of Rock. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Speaking of nepo babies, you know who was a nepo baby that I found out last night. Hmm. Osama bin Laden, bit of a nepo kid. Whoa, what was his dad doing? Or his mom? His dad was dad was also a very rich like warlord. Is that crazy? God, you just never want to look into your heroes too closely. Well, it's like you can't achieve and you can't even be like a world class <laughs> terrorist without a little little help from your parents. A little boost from the rents. He got his first. He, he bought his first, like uh, you know, arsenal of missiles and things with like a three hundred dollar donate or three hundred thousand dollar donation from his parents. And you're like, it, oh, okay. Well, you would have been nobody without that first couple of bombings. First couple of rockets. I mean, that's where that's where you make your reputation. That's where he, he got a little swag. He started getting a little juice online. Bingo, bango. Oh, World Trade Centers. Man, if if Twitter was around back then, he would have been exposed as a nepo baby way early on. He would not have had the authentic, organic fan base that he did. Mm-mm. people wouldn't have been into it it just kind of takes yeah. everything away when you it know takes some of the magic much, away right never meet it's your like heroes that, Tom. It's, it's the trump i started my first business with a small million dollar loan from small million dollar loan. still kind of hilarious <laughs> it's thing to say. one of the best deliveries of all time it's it's kind of it's a nice glimpse into how out of touch some people can truly be because <laughs> he believed it 
quick million dollar loan and he's going like what like i don't know why you guys would think that was weird i started the business no one ever tossed you a quick mill you're gonna <laughs> look at me in the face and say no one tossed you a milli steel workers of hartford connecticut you're gonna look <laughs> me in the face and tell me no one's ever tossed you a quick mill <laughs> please don't unionize by the way that would suck <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know what would be really tough is if you were a Nepo baby and you made nothing of it. Like, what if you did have that and you try and you still failed? I just don't even know that people do that because at some Fail? point in your life, you get the money. No, I mean, like if you were like it's, you know, you're going to Neptown, your dad's Jack Nicholson or whatever, and you try to go the acting route and then oh. it kind of doesn't work. Yeah. You know, you're like, oh, so I am just truly untalented. Yeah, that would suck. That would hurt. I mean, lot. I'm sure that happens literally all the time. And then you yeah, pivot. That's true. And then you, you start talking in a Jamaican accent and you're Chet Hanks now. Right, 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 right. Or you're like, oh, I could just go make a full asshole of myself on a reality television show. Yeah, a lot of a lot of them do that. Damn, it's like, hey, just enjoy the spoils. Just like be, uh, just don't be in the limelight. Don't do it. Just travel. Hey, you didn't work as hard as my dad's grandfather. <laughs> Shout out Roy Scoble. Oh, uh, he's the best. Did I tell you I saw him again last week? Did he remember your name? Oh, uh, no. Uh, Fuck. but no, I meant I meant I watched him do stand up comedy again. Oh, and right. uh, <laughs> he is the uh, he's he's the funniest person alive. The, the way the uh, truth. We don't need to keep sucking on his titties but yeah he really is unbelievable and it makes me inspired to do stand up more yeah wouldn't mind watching him take a little latte foam to the face <laughs> if you know what I'm saying Ooh, chai tea please <laughs> chai tea his ass oh my god <laughs> heaven. Oh. he's one of those guys that I, I think like why is he not we talk about this all the time I, I don't think people understand how difficult it is to do what he does on stage i agree and i think that's kind of the mark of somebody that's truly great is when they make it look very easy and people think oh yeah he's just like doing whatever he's uh yeah being a goofball but it's like yeah in the if i did that i would look so embarrassingly bad mm -hmm. i think that's why everyone thinks they can do stand-up is because they watch people that are truly great at it and they go yeah he's just seems easy talking yeah, people are like, loving I've, it. I have I have funny stories in my life I can tell. Yeah, and then it's you know then he, it's they're just serving you up you know eight pounds of bread with no turkey in the middle, Tom. There you go, a lot of bread, thin slice of meat. Got of a lot of young comics that are, and, and we're young comics, but I, I, we got we got some. I got a DM today from a from a new comic I just met who said, "Hey man, how do I get on JF just for laughs new faces?" Do they reach out or do I send them something? Because it's just uh, that's literally the only obstacle is figuring out. <laughs> do I just send a clip in? Is or? it just an email thing? Like, how do they know to email me? Because like I, I like no one's ever heard of me and I'm honestly not very good, but I would like the opportunity. I think I should do it. Hey, Tom, another quick question. How can I audition for a Marvel movie? Oh, that's easy. Honestly. You just got to take an acting class in Chicago. I'd say intro to online acting or no, what was it called? Make on sure camera. Uh, it, on camera and make sure it is over Zoom. This is a little inside baseball. You guys, this is how Tim and I became best friends. I'm going to say best, best friends. Damn, dude. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Like online a, like a, acting class during the pandemic. Texting the whole time about these absolute sociopaths. In first class. class, first class. A guy asked how he can audition for a Marvel movie. <laughs> and to and to the uh, instructor's credit, he said, "All right, uh, no more questions. So we're gonna move on." <laughs> and I was like, "That rules." That guy absolutely didn't give this guy the time of day. Oh man! By the way, I do want to because I don't remember his name. I think you do because I think you looked up some of his sketches recently. And uh, when we get, we'll we'll put that on the Patreon. But I I do want that name because. Daddy needs to go. I think I know sketches. it still. I think I can. I think I can find it. That guy I'm was kind of diabolical with that. I really, I, I really can, can dig into some people that I don't care for. Well, you're a, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm very similar. You're not going to catch me. I, I love a nice hate listen. <laughs> yeah. There's. I'll, there's I'll hate a, watch. I'll hate listen. There is a podcast in particular that I listen to weekly 
Uh, and it's just it's a full hate listen. And How many listeners makes... do you think they have? Eight. <laughs> You're one of them. Every and week. I'm one. <laughs> <laughs> I make sure I always listen through like some sort of VPN so they can't track who I am. They're like, damn, we got a guy in Bangladesh that loves <laughs> this pot. Uh, yeah, we've had some more international people lately. I don't know who's going where. Hey, we're 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 stretching. We're all over Europe right now. We're stretching. I'm we feeling good it. about it. That's probably people on a VPN hate listening to us, but yeah, I good. um. Oh, hey, uh, we got a zero of the week submission. Let's absolutely Wait, go. Say what you were about to say while I find it. Um, I was just, uh, I don't even know what I was going to say, but yes, I, I do love a nice, I'll hate listen to a comedy album. I'll hate listen to a pod, something about it. Okay. There's this... no way it's healthy mentally, but I do enjoy doing it. No, it's really not good. It's probably not good karma either. That's what our good friend, Laura Pico always says whenever I start talking shit and she goes, this is not good karma. Oh, zip it. <laughs> Did you hear that peak? <laughs> hear that peak? You zip it. Let's talk some shit for once. Okay, uh, this zero submission is too long. Holy oh, shit. shit. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. So can I just like try to summarize it? Real can quick? we get? Yeah, let's get to the meat. Um, God, speaking of a lot of bread, I mean, that's just a full <laughs> loaf. Sorry, Joe. This is Joe from uh, Minnesota. Um, all right. You, so, Joe. okay, here's the thing. I love a submission. He asked if he could submit. I said, please do. Love it. And then he sent it. Uh it's too it's too riffy. You you just gotta tell us tell us what happened. Get to it. Get to it. Cause he starts with let me take you back to the biggest holiday of the year, Domino's fifty percent off weekend. Oh. <laughs> no. Already off to a tough start. <laughs> Already off to a tough start. I thought for sure he was gonna go like um Toyota Thon. Yeah, I mean, this isn't that far off. Sorry. Again, Joe, we appreciate the listen. Hey, Joe, we love you, but we are going to shit on you here for a little bit. <laughs> okay, so... Like when an audience member comes up to you after the show, and you can tell, like, they got that little look on their face, uh, like they have a line all teed up that you're going to love, and you're like, this is about to be a tough interaction. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they, well, because they'll try to riff something from your set. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Can we just? Are you buying my koozie or not? <laughs> Please, I need to pay rent. Okay, so uh, it Love is amazing Jeff. how cocky I can get sometimes. Uh, while I literally pay rent with donation based with koozies. koozies. <laughs> <laughs> I should have no confidence. Like, oh, uh, when you I renew your lease, there's like a new clause, and it's like, please stop paying with five dollar bills. <laughs> yeah. It is a nightmare to deposit this. <laughs> hey, some of those are like five, and then like a couple wins on top too. Um, Please sorry. uncrinkle the bills before you pay me. <laughs> sorry, so many of them were wet. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I call in my order, drive down to Domino's. Uh, I get there at the same time as this lady. I shoot her a smile, um, and I concede the entrance so they get to the door at the same time. It's so good, good guy vibes. Trying to be like, yeah, you going first? She sure. goes in stone faced. Okay. So ton, tons of groups uh, ahead of her um, lady who's he goes whose haircut you can imagine. So I'm guessing this is like a, a stereotypical haircut. We'll say Karen. Yeah. yeah. Even though uh, I'm sick of that reference. And um, she goes in and immediately starts uh, walking to the front of the line and is pissed at all the employees saying like it said my order was ready. Um no one's handing out pizzas. She goes, someone needs to be handing out these pizzas. She's being ignored. Sweaty delivery driver walks in and she yells at the delivery driver. Okay. <laughs> these pizzas need to go out. I've been waiting about five minutes, mind you. Okay, so not that long. Driver goes over and starts calling out names. And after all the names, she's going, no, it's not my name. <laughs> Okay. Kind of incredible. This, this is a zero, though. This is a great zero behavior. Um, blah, blah, blah. Find mine. He digs towards the back, finds it. Finally, she walks out. So his point is, while rude, the lady get, did get the gears moving, and, and then the delivery driver ended up handing out everyone's pizzas who was waiting. Um, and uh, blah, blah, blah. So clearly... A zero in the story. Oh, oh, he goes. Domino's do, somehow Domino's is his zero in this story. 
while the sideswept tiger striped lady is the hero that no one wanted but the one that got us all our pizzas i'm still giving her a zero i think uh, you this know, might be I, a rare have we ever had a zero and a hero be one person because because it's a tough one because you know it's kind of a are you a, a means justify the end kind of a guy oh yeah do you know what i'm saying because she did no ends justify the means what did i say means justify the ends i guess it's the same concept it's just different means sides at the same point the, oh yeah yeah but yes you know what i'm saying the end justifies the means she did get it cooking everybody yeah. got the pizza yeah but sometimes you know sometimes you gotta <laughs> You know, crack a few uh, Greg's to make a Tomlet. You know what I mean? Whoa, that was pretty good. If your name was Greg, that would have been so fire. <laughs> uh, if anyone watches Succession, I stole that line oh, directly from a great damn show. It. <laughs> I was I was so proud of you there. Yeah, you know. But I appreciate hard. your honesty. Yeah, I know. I got to so, come clean. I, I don't know. I think it's a this is a zero two hero moment. Shout well, out at Hercules. first you're going. I stole that from Hercules. Going. That's more my reference base. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got it. You know, I don't like the way she went about it, but it kind of needed to be done. Yeah, like they were understaffed, and she. she I mean, that delivery driver was going to come in, grab one thing, and leave, and keep it moving. Yeah, and she goes, "Hey, get your ass hey, back here. Pass out these Zaz. No, your, I do love it. No, <laughs> yeah, no, that's not mine." <laughs> well, here's here's why maybe she is a zero is I don't think she was trying to help out anyone else but herself. Ooh, that I think this it is a just good intent. happened to happened to work out. Yes. But I don't think she was in there trying to make sure everybody got their pizza. She wasn't looking around going, you know what? We have been waiting for a long time. These people are hungry. Yeah. No, she was. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> intent matters. Intent does matter. Yeah. Also, you rarely you would think this lady that's got a bit of a tooth going on, you would think she would order. Uh, I don't know why I thought you were going to say ass. <laughs> uh, she's like, got a great touch. You would. I mean, but wouldn't you think she was going to go to a like a nicer? That's true. It's weird to be pompous about Domino's. And you're in Domino's, and you fifty percent off. Yeah, you didn't even get it delivered. You you picked it up. You're yeah. picking up Dom's, and you got a tooth. Yeah, think so. check that at the door. I don't think so. Lady. Save that for IHOP. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I think I'm going. Yeah, she gets a zero. Ding, ding, ding. And Good you know submission, what? Joe. I'm sorry we're making fun of you up top. It's just for future reference, everybody. Send us the zeros. I love it. We're always like, send it to us. We'll be mean. <laughs> yeah, we'll eviscerate you in just your overall yeah. phrasing. You know, I really, he only tossed in one riff. No, there was a lot that I kind of skipped over. <laughs> oh, that that's right. That was your to the meat version. Actually, yeah. go ahead and screenshot that. Send it over to me. I want to hate read that. <laughs> Joe, you pee. <laughs> no, we love you, Joseph. Have uh, a good day. Get some yeah. doms for once. Get, Get some, some doms, doms on us. We won't pay you back, but it's no, on if us. it's 50% off, we'll definitely think about talking about it. Totally stiffen you on that bill, but yeah. You know. uh, Man, appreciate the submission, though. I've been, you know, like I said, I've just been having a tough time finding zeros. Tom. Yeah, I'm not finding a ton out there. I'm being a little more well, of a clues well, on planes. I, I take that back. People are doing some insane shit on the internet. You know, Ooh. we're in weird times, and people are really saying some stuff on the internet. Tom. Yeah, that's if there's one thing people do. It's have you heard about this? Say bad this? stuff on the internet. Have you seen some of this internet activity? We need quality control. You need two friends to sign off on everything you post. People gotta say, hey, maybe archive that one. Mm -hmm. That one's not it. Maybe write that one in your journal. <laughs> I don't think enough people this are journaling, <laughs> Tom. This is the kind of hard-hitting shit I'm writing down. Well, people are trying to come up with hot takes on Israel Palestine. I'm writing stuff down like why in every movie sword fight is there a little moment where each person is like a little impressed with each other? <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, they do. It's like ting 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 and then they finally realize like, "Oh, I believe I've met my match." Exactly. It's like nice foot footwork. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah, they're like I'm kind of like cunty about it. It's so Funny. It's like, oh, a worthy adversary. Are you going to fight or make like out? Yeah, it's like, just get it over with, fellas. How about a smooch? It's the same thing as like the right before the villain in like really cheese ball action movies is about to kill the guy. He says, I'm going to enjoy this. 
Yeah, he takes a. And then he he puts long. well, he puts down the lethal weapon that he has and like takes out brass knuckles or something. Yeah, <laughs> nobody would ever do that. Yeah. And now, then, oops! Here the comes friend... his friend that was dead on the ground. Exactly. <laughs> Still has a bullet in the chamber. Shot him perfectly. <laughs> oh God, Tom! I have to confess something here. I um I don't know if you remember this, but there several episodes back we we were talking about uh the goofball. Remember the goofball, the little baseball pitch that I was. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People. I was uh, at at a place last night watching a little baseball, and I pulled out the goofball riff, and I pretended like it just came to me. Hey, buddy, I got no hate for that. And let me tell you something, Tom. It got a big pop. It crushed. What'd you say? Can you can I hear the delivery? Well, we were talking about it. And I was like, you know, sorry, be, the pitch. They were, it was kind of like the perfect setup because they were talking about how they were making baseball more interesting. And that's where I was like, well, well, well. Uh, he's, he's start, well you guys are kind of pitching doing, this one, right? Doing there. literally a pitching windup. Yeah. Like, here we go. <laughs> so my big suggestion was just, you know, they change it to strikes and goofballs. And, uh, you know, now we're there now we're we off go. to the races. God, that was, so that's a different riff. Yeah, I guess it's a new twist. Because it, it was it was it uh, was, you know, th- this guy's known for his curveball. This next pitcher is known for his goofball. Known for his goofball. <laughs> I still think that's better, but honestly, but still really good. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it got a big pop, and the big pop felt very disingenuous. I, I enjoyed it, but I was like, "This is a lie." Yeah. So you this... didn't own up to it, though. Absolutely not. <laughs> I appreciate that. I was living in the pop, I mean, Tom. Brother, I've been right there with you. I, I mean, I've hey, done that it's a all just a party times. trick, you know. I every time my uh, every time people ask me after shows. If I'm actually, which this is a weird thing. People often go, are you actually one of eight kids? Like that would just be like a really lame thing to make up. Because eight's not like extreme enough to make up. (laughs) You would make up like 14. Yeah. 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 And then I'd be like, no, I'm really one of 10. Actually, that's what Denzel does. You had 12 brothers and sisters and remember the Titans. And he goes, you remember all their names? And he goes, huh? 12 sounds better. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But I go, I'm like, yeah. And then they go, are you Catholic? I go, yes. And my parents only had sex eight times. They told me that. And it gets Bingo. a laugh every time. Bingo. And it's like, yeah, I'm a piece of shit. I've said that no, a thousand times. but No, that feels less disingenuous than a, than a hang riff. Yeah, because you're like, cheating your friends. I'm cheating on my friends. <laughs> I'm lying right to my friend's face. <laughs> but you know what, Tom? I was hanging with a few people that I didn't know very well, so you kind of have to... You got to bring it. You want to crush the first time yeah, they see you. Kind of, you kind of have to show up with a little bit of heat, and so I just wasn't willing to, to tell them that they're hanging out with a big fat liar. I hope I'm there when you bust out the goofball again. I'll yeah, stay we'll, silent, but I'll know. It'll be one of those moments where I look at you and I go, "We'll give each other a knowing glance." I get one now. <laughs> yeah, you're like, mm-hmm. no, I get to say ten out of ten crowd work. Now. <laughs> yeah, one more time. <laughs> Oh God in uh, heaven, Tom! Buddy. Where are we at? Are we done with this? I think we just hit an hour? hour. I think we just hit it right now. Absolutely love that. Let's um, wrap this, Joe. We're so sorry. We love your submission. Your that was a great submission. Send in more, everyone. Uh, we love we love reading zero submissions because you know we find the the joy in the world through the worst people. <laughs> that's that's what we're doing here. It's kind of our thing. <laughs> um, let's see. This comes out tomorrow. I will be not next week. Uh, next week I'll be in. Washington DC and then Nashville, Huntsville, Atlanta and then uh Kansas City. So come on out folks. Kansas City? Um let's see. I'm going back to the great city of Chicago. Oh, what when? I'm jealous. I know I'm going to be there in 2 weeks. I'm going to be doing a little some sort of a little taping thing for Zanies and then I'm going to be at the Hum Junk. Oh, and then I'm going to Janesville. Get some goddamn tickets Let's for go, Janesville. Janesville. And then I'm going, going right over to a different city in Wisconsin and doing four shows there on the weekend. I'll post that to Instagram. I forgot what the city is called. Sheboygan? No. Milwaukee. Madison. No, no, no. Kenosha. No. Deloitte. No. Not Deloitte. Beloit. Deloitte is an accounting firm. I was about to say, isn't that a uh, <laughs> consulting firm? Um. All right. I forget. It'll be on my dang Instagram. But hey, we love you. Hey, go to Tim's Instagram. He's popping off right now. Oh, finally. Give, give him some love. love. Absolutely zero love. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we love you guys. Bye. Bye.
married my sister, now we're living together. 